On this episode of All Things Business, the podcast, we're joined by Richard Osborne, founder of the Business Data Group and also UK Business Forum. Today, Richard, I'm glad you can be with us. What I want to talk to you about is because I know your backstory, yeah. um, but what I want to talk to you about is the resilience in business and how you have not only grown as a person, but as a businessman, but also as a entrepreneur on the businesses that you've started. I've read through and we've spoken in the past about the challenges that you have faced, whether they be people problems, economical problems, growth problems. For business, for people that are looking at starting a business today, the negativity that they're going to get told, what would be the, the, the biggest piece of advice that you would tell somebody to look at before starting a business? So I'm going to spin that on its head okay. because I think there's a problem where there's a lot of publicity out there from so many different sources that are very pro start your business, go for it. You know, anybody, um, there was a, some marketing done a little while back. There's an entrepreneur in everybody. Yep. And I think that's a problem because it paints this picture, especially when you look on TV and you see your Dragon's Den, your apprentice programs and things, and other reality shows that encourage people to quit their jobs and start a business. And there's n very little out there that actually does paint the real picture of how difficult and how shit it can be. Yeah. You've, got, um, you've got issues where literally you need somebody somebody who's leaves a job and starts a business they are more than likely experts in their skill set that they do but there is no training in every other aspect of running a business and what most people do is they'll just start a business doing that thing with no concept of that people aren't going to pay you if, if people can get out of paying you they'll get out of paying you People will always be asking for freebies or do this for some exposure, and I'll, you know, I'll tell my mates, tell my contacts about it. Yeah. The um, you've got your mortgage, all your in, um, your bills and everything to pay. Or in my situation, you've suddenly got a newborn baby that you've got to um, make sure it doesn't get the house taken away. These sort of things go are going on. Which, when you are in a job and you're doing your skill, you have no concept that all this other stuff's going on. So I, th I think the problem is actually that people don't get told about how difficult it actually really is. Yeah. And the reality is, is not everybody's cut out to actually run a business. There's people who think they are, yeah. but they're not. No, <clears throat> I agree completely with you on that. Um, I looked at something and read something similar the other day on um, that there's an entrepreneur in everyone. Hmm. Personally, I don't think that there is. Myself, I'm not cut out to run my own business. I like working in a business, and that's what I enjoy. Do you think there is an entrepreneur in everyone? It depends on your definition of entrepreneur, and we know we all have wonderful experiences yeah, yeah. of that overused word. There, it, skills can be taught, so somebody can be taught to run a business, but there's this little like barrier, this little next step to be what my definition of an entrepreneur is. Uh, where it, you're like you're in a boxing ring and it doesn't matter how many times you get punched, you're getting back up. Yep. The uh, My belief is that when you're looking at the, an entrepreneur and everybody, people aren't born entrepreneurs. They don't live their life, go through school or whatever. They, they just go willingly going along their life, doing whatever their life is. And then something humongous, potentially catastrophic or life-changing happens. Yep. And when that happens, that person becomes what some may define as an entrepreneur. Because whatever it might be, they need to change the environment around them. They need to secure something. That would be different for everybody. That is as close to an entrepreneur and everybody as I could possibly get. But that relies on something almost catastrophic happening to that person or their environment to push them past that barrier Running with your analogy of the boxing ring, which I like, you've yeah. been punched in the face a few times. <laughs> can you tell? I can tell, <laughs> yeah. Um, but you have. You've continued to, to get back up. You may have took a short knee, but you've, you've mm -hmm. still continued. But you, 
you didn't set out life to go into a boxing ring, carrying on that analogy, you almost got pushed into the boxing ring? The, yeah, so the defining, there's, when I think back to sort of late teens, early 20s, I was always trying to do things to make some money because the upbringing I had never had any money. So you're always having bailiffs, loan sharks and uh, people like that turning up at your door, things being taken away. Uh, So I was always trying to earn some money, but I wouldn't, there was no, I wasn't going to that next stage. The push came from, there's no other way, but literally a breakdown. So an environment was going on, which whole longer conversation um with my family life uh that was impacting so much that everything was collapsing around me and uh, my career I had was falling apart and so I did the most logical thing that somebody in the middle of a breakdown can do and that just start a business yep and um that's that was my life changing moment but at that point I wasn't I didn't have the skills in business so I was that technical person that figured I could run a company um, the problem I had is I'd given up a well-paid job with ev- everything that it had with it and had no e- you know I had to find income and I had a mortgage and I just got married didn't have kids at that point and um, I was learning on the fly and that came later which we'll touch on in a moment but <clears throat> Everything you've learned since that day, you'd still make exactly the same decision today if you had your time again? The because you think that's moulded <clears throat> your career business path? There's times I look back and think if I had the knowledge I had now, yep. then I would have made different decisions. Uh, but... And there is times in my past over the past, I've been self-employed for more than 20 years now. So in the past sort of 24, 25 years, I've sat there and thought, oh, yeah, that was a bad call. That was a bad call. But the reality is, it's going to sound very spiritual, but everything that's happened has got me to where I am now. Yep. And although there's things that are not great, I'm happy where I am now. So it's like the sort of butterfly effect. If you go back and change something, does that mean that things would be different now? And actually, does that mean that I wouldn't want, um, you know, my daughter's just making a a next step in her own business. If I changed things 10 years ago, would that mean she wouldn't be doing these things now? Because I'm well chuffed of what she's doing now. So I wouldn't change anything when it comes down to it. I've looked back at the time and and sort of cringed at some of the decisions I've made or with the knowledge I have now, I can see how I got things wrong. But actually, if it came to the crunch and somebody was stood in front of me, Harry Potter with his magic wand and said, I can change all your, change these bits in history and was given the opportunity, I wouldn't. I agree with that. I personally also believe that everything in life happens for a reason. Um, Challenges are sent in life to either break you, test you or better you. Because if everything was rosy, nobody would would learn anything. Um, Given the businesses that you've started, the businesses that you've sold, the businesses that you've rebought after selling them, how much um, joy do you take being able to sit there with your daughter to give her, I would define as words of wisdom, she probably says, Dad, shut up, I don't care. <laughs> you are so spot on there. Yeah. The, um, it's, it depends on her mood. Uh, now, my, my daughter had to go self-employed. Uh, we homeschooled our children okay. and the the benefit of that meant that my daughter was able to go through the qualifications and training uh, like learning that she wanted to do for her career when you go into a mainstream school they throw every kind of subject at you and you have to yep. do all these different exams and all this sort of stuff that a lot of it has no relevance to what that young person needs to learn so she was homeschooled and she had all the qualifications she needed for her career that she wanted to do by the time she was 16. She wanted to go to college, started college, six months, six weeks later was like, I'm learning nothing. 
uh, wanted to go for an apprenticeship. I can't do any apprenticeships because I'm already overqualified for them. So that ruled her out. She then applied for a job. She couldn't be hired because it was illegal for anybody to hire her under the age of 18 without it doing an, like an apprenticeship. Yeah. So she had to, she effectively w- was told, you just have to remain unemployed till, till you turn 18. Um, however, if you go self-employed, we can then hire you. The same companies, so she ended up working for the same riding schools yeah. who um, couldn't employ her, but they could take her on freelance. It's absolutely crazy. So she's been self-employed now for four years. And I am so proud. I like she works, I say she works her nuts off. Uh, she she does work her nuts off. She yeah. literally um, works some days from like six, seven in the morning till like nine, 10 at night. I remember what it was like. However, nine, well, eight times out of 10, if I sit down and try and give her some business advice, it's like, no, leave it alone. <laughs> like, but it's like she'll listen to other people. So there's a few times where I just have to sit there and think, right, she'll come to me when she wants anything. Or I'll just drop a little like hint here and there. Yeah, have yeah. you thought about that? Or um, actually, that's a pretty good idea you're doing then. If you add that bit on, it'll like work like but that. But you've got that relationship where she, yeah. if she needs you, she'll come to you and say, dad, yeah. what do you think to this? She's just taken on a quite a substantial lease on a property now and um she's identifies that that that's a big step in her business and she's full on like dad i need to sit down can you go through this and we're working out her, you know her pricing and her marketing and things and at this moment in time she is full on absorbing dad anything you can tell me um, nice. Take it while you can. Take it while I can. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Um, <clears throat> her passion for horses, that come from yours, that come from mum? No, Because I'm pretty neither sure you're, you're a motorbike man. <clears throat> I'm right? a motorbike man. I yeah. prefer my horses to be about 1,000 of them on yeah, yeah, two yeah. wheels. Yeah, yeah. The, um, actually, 1,000 would be quite horrendous. I've got that You'd wrong. You'd give it a go, though. <laughs> go, yeah. You would give it a go. The, uh, no, although I've got a horse tattoo, but it's um, she, ever since she was about four or five, she just loved them, and she's always wanted to do this. And there's a spoken word artist who, a guy called Sully Breeks, who's a brilliant guy if you ever listen to any of his stuff. And he did some spoken word talking about your plan A, plan B. And what he, what he said, which I stand so true to, is if you're putting time and effort into what's your backup plan, then that means you're expecting or preparing your, uh, your main plan to fail. So you're not putting all your effort into your primary plan. When she, decided, when she said, I want to work in equestrian, I was all for just heart and soul into it, everything. You know, don't worry if anything goes wrong. You're young enough to adapt, change. And as you know, I've put my heart and soul into the last 20 years to build a environment where my children can feel secure um, so that I'll always be here to catch them. Well, I say me, it's my wife as well. So, you know, mum and dad will always be here to catch you if anything doesn't work out. So just go all guns of what you want, 100 miles an hour. <clears throat> and a bit of that stems from you didn't have that when you were growing no. up or going into business. You didn't have that safety net or support. Oh, no, no. The, um, you know, flashback, you know, I've, we've, as a child, I remember coming home from school and all our furniture's out on the road, literally, yep. where bailiffs have come in and kicked us out several times. That's happened. They uh, moved so many, I can't remember how many times we moved around the country, always on the move. They um, right down, we've lived in static caravans, we've lived in women's hostel, we've lived in um, people who have put us up on their settees and floors. So I always, my why, to answer preempt a question. Yeah, yeah, it was just but, coming. It was, it was just <laughs> so coming. So my why, it, it wasn't like why I started going self-employed that was just falling into it because I had no clue what to do but ever since my daughter was born and now a son as well my why is to make sure that they have a home and that home is okay now I'm getting emotional um the that why is get my words out in a minute just that they will always have a home yeah 
Yeah. It, no, I, 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 I wasn't looking for a reaction because I, I find it massively important what people's why is, mm. not why do they work in the industry that they work in, why did they start their business, it's why do you get up in the morning and why mm. do you do what you do? And that could be work, your personal reaction and everything. And no matter how bad your day is going, yeah. it won't be as bad as what you're trying to stop. Yeah. So, um, yeah, credit credit and applause to you on that. So fast forward, everything that you've learned in business has brought you to where you are today. We've got Business Data Group, yeah. and we've also got, um, I'm going to go with your, your, your baby, your <laughs> new baby. Uh, well, no, I say new baby. It's not a new baby. Um, UKBF, UK yeah. Business Forums. Um, that is growing at an incredibly fast pace. Um, we spoke just before we came on that I used an, a, another analogy of, to me, UK Business Forums seems as a platform similar to what helped you when you first started, that you surrounded yourself with knowledgeable people, that if you didn't know the answer to something, you could go and ask them. And with UK Business Forum, there's, there's how many members now? The well, we've just made an acquisition of another community. Okay. Um, last month, and we're bringing them two together. Combined, that's a half a million power, half a million members. Half a million. Yeah. Five hundred thousand. Take a couple. Of I heard people. half a billion to start with, and, <laughs> and if this chair was any wobblier, I'd have fallen <laughs> off. Um, so that's half a million people that I could go on to today because we yeah. are members of UK yeah. Business Forum, and ask for help yeah and put a scenario out there and businesses or the the businessmen business women that are on there they genuinely want to help so when first started so next year's ukbf uh, uk business forums is 20 years old and february 2003 is when i started it and it was started because i'm sat in my kitchen at home really not not, feeling way out of my depth like I'm literally um I've started my second business um with some a a bank loan and three credit cards I've got no money coming in I've got a six-month-old daughter and I'm not telling the wife like how stressed I am because she's trying to look after our daughter and when the phone rings trying to keep a crying baby away and it, it was just a really tense environment and I had nobody to talk to um, and I just thought I'd just create something online and it blew up from there. Jump forward nearly 20 years yeah. and it's exactly the same and people are still in those same situations. Nothing's changed in 20 years for people who are 20 years younger than I am now. Still, you know, millennials, I think, um, Generation Z is, if I get the Gen terminology, Z, Gen yeah. Z and um, millennials, starting up businesses in the exact same fret that um that i was feeling but the difference now is the community and the environment you know this platform is 20 years older so you've got people now um generation x gen x um boomers as my son Uh, likes to call it further further (laughs) down the alphabet the uh but the so you've got people who are 20 years wiser uh, and more. So we've had people like, he's not around now, but like the managing director of Commodore, um, the c- computer manufacturer from when I was a youngster, on there sharing knowledge and advice. There's, um, there's investors, there's uh, re- people retired. So they've got all this um, experience um, sharing knowledge and just helping. It's, you get a buzz, you get a warm feeling about helping younger generation come through so uk business forums has matured beyond what it was when it started before it's a lot of people in similar boats and we just all mucked in together we helped each other out um it grew and grew to like when i sold it it was something like some hundred thousand or ninety thousand members uh, when i sold it in 2007 jump forward now and i say we've got half a million the but the problems that people were facing 20 years ago, ironically, haven't changed. And I think that's a statement in itself. There's yeah, problems yeah. there. And that's what I hope UK Business Forums can be a part of fixing. One thing for me, UKBF has restored my faith in social media slash the internet. Um, and by that, I mean people on there are genuine. 
Yeah. So if you if you go onto other social media platforms, people are not genuine. People don't like seeing people succeed. They'll rather say something um, negative than positive. Where I flick through and I read some of the comments that are on there, that they're quite endearing, and it yeah, it's restored my faith in humanity a little bit. But then also. Um, when we look at the mental health challenges that are um, becoming more and more um, influential in the days, to have that safe place that UKBF to me appears is that it's somewhere that you can go and talk to people, that it's not you sat in your kitchen nearly 20 years ago. You can go on there and find help. And for me, I think that's that's massive. It's the comparing i i sometimes say that ukbf is a social media platform yeah um in the just to try and pigeonhole it but the difference is if you look at twitter your facebook your instagram's a bit different i suppose it's pictures of a few words but they're not they're shouty platforms if you yep. go to any social media platform it's rah rah look at me um linkedin they're all the same it's all promo shout 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 UK Business Forums is a conversation. Yep. It's not, it doesn't exist to do loads of shouting, look at me. The, um, it's a place where when um, some of the most heart-wrenching threads are in to people talking about the insolvency and I'm struggling, especially coming out of the pandemic and people are laden with debt and they come on there and, I've got to close my business. I've got to close the doors. I've got these personal guarantees. I've got this. And there's a bunch of, a couple of them local from around here as well, insolvency practitioners who just go on there and just give them guidance, give them um, sort of pointers to, you know, next steps. Because there's problems in every aspect of business, but that particular area, these people are at the end of the road and the support they get from even people who just don't know the answers but are turning around saying, you know, you've got to look after, you know, make do the right things for you and just give that support. You're right. It's not, um, it's, it's a completely different environment. It doesn't exist to put people down. It exi- It doesn't exist for people to just say, shout, oh, look at me. Uh, people get business. There's a lot of business transacted between members, but that's built off the back of building relationships through the communication on there. It exists to... And you've Support. you've also got as well that when you you rewind and go back to that person starting their business, they find their brand, they mm. find their image, but they don't find their support circle. Mm. And for me, people that aren't engaging with UKBF should, because of that. And I suppose the biggest word out of it is community. Um, we'll come to a close shortly. But in a in a nutshell, for people looking at starting a business, yeah. three golden gems that you would give them to really look at before taking that step. Well, I'll repeat the fir- first one to be. I'll repeat what I um, said earlier, which is your why. Yeah. Because n- <clears throat> it's like having a baby. Nobody can tell you what it's like having a baby until you had a baby. Correct. The until you're actually running your own business, you'll never really understand how often it is difficult, really difficult. So your reason behind doing it has to be strong. When, you, when you've got a job and you think, I don't want to go into work today, you, um, you find an excuse, you've got a headache or whatever and you don't go in. Yeah. The, um, when it's your business uh, because if you've got a job, you're still going to get paid generally. If it's your business, you don't go in, you don't get paid. You don't have holidays. You don't have sick days. Um, if you're tired, tough shit. You still got to go in and do it. If you've got a headache, tough shit. Feeling sick, tough shit. It literally is. There is no stop. Uh, if you're lucky, you'll grow your business up. You'll get some staff and you might get some support, but then you can take a day off because you're, you've got staff that will keep the business running, but they're relying on you to make sure their mortgages get paid. So you're taking on the additional responsibility. So your why has to be so powerful. The other one really 
um, I heard fairly recently, which I thought was um, fantastic. So it's a somebody from UK Business World, a guy called Dwayne Jackson. Um, he said, if you're driving from London to Leeds, you don't wait until every set of traffic lights is green before you start driving. So if you, uh, and that's basically, you just got to get going. You start your journey and you might have to do some detours. There might be a few red lights that hit. You might get pulled over speeding occasionally and uh, have fines. Things will go wrong, but you just have to get on and do it. So the, the, we're all here all the time. People are saying, I'm just waiting for that big idea before I'm going to start. I'm just, you know, I want to run my own business. Not sure what to do, I'm, but I'm going to do it one day. You're not. Don't co- stop kidding yourself. You're not. You're either going to do it or you're in. So if you if you really are going to go self and are going to start your own business, stop making up excuses and just do it. Because all those lights are never going to be green. You just have to know where you're heading and just start heading in that general direction. Yeah, there's no straight line going to it. I've got a business idea. Yeah. And this is why I'm not an entrepreneur. <laughs> so we're in the middle of a uh, uh, an energy crisis where electricity is quite expensive. Um, home fitness is quite important. People like the uh, the bike rides in their oh, house. Me, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fully <clears throat> engaged in it. My bike's see-through and doesn't work. But you take a, an electric bike or a, a, a bike that runs on it, you plug it into the wall... And the more you cycle, the more electricity it generates for your house. I've told my son, because he likes to play computer games yeah. a lot. And um, with the electricity bills going up, I've told him we're going to buy him one of those energy energy yeah. bikes. So if he wants to play his computer, he'll have to cycle to generate the electricity for, to use his computer. How did he take it? Because this is going to... Um, he's gonna... packed his bags. He's, mo- he's, he's he, moving he, out. He must be okay. adopted. Right. All the, uh... I'll, I'll, I'll shelve that one. But I joke because it is. You are... You, when you just said, waiting for that next big idea to come along. And I like that analogy. The lights the lights aren't always green. You've got to, nah. you've got to go. As, as me and Arthur joked the other day when we came back from somewhere, we got stuck at every single red light. And if you look at that in business, that's going to be challenging. Um, lastly, brand me. How important is it? Because you've said obviously social media platforms are quite shouty, mm. but how important is the people within the business or the person in, in in your case? And I use Jacob as an example that I I think that chap's fantastic because yeah. you can see the passion in him. Yeah. If you cut him open, he would bleed orange because yeah. he, he he believes so strongly in it. Yeah. Again, similar to the question I asked at the beginning about is there an entrepreneur in everyone, how lucky in business is it to find somebody that is that engaged with your business and your passion? Think um, If you think of a click, um, everybody in a click is all aligned. They're all on that same little click and that's just the way they are. Um, business, community groups, they're all the same. And... They, they're they led by a belief in the person creating, running that group. It's easy for me to say this. I just believe so much in what UKBF can achieve and what it does. Yeah. The And people, if, if somebody comes and works for Business Data Group and they don't share in those same values they won't stay it just they it, they won't feel comfortable it won't fit with them uh, and they'll move on um those who do stay within business data group because business data group owns ukbf yeah. then they they believe in it and they'll stay i am very um fortunate to have a great team um I, lit, I say look around the office, it's a different environment now. I, I look around Zoom yeah, yeah, and around it's the computer, a, screen, <laughs> around yeah. the computer screen and there is an amazing team of amazing people who are fantastic. I have had uh, staff over the, over the years who just haven't um, gelled and they've just not stayed. You don't have to get rid of them. They just... People are attracted to people that they believe in and share the same values on. And I have a vision. I can't think of another word. Right. The, um, um, I have a particular character of, you know, I'm a particular kind of character. I have a particular kind of values. And the people who stick as part of the team, they reflect that. 
It's the same on UKBF. If I was a distant owner of yep. that community, I think you can't really own a community, but the you know the um, the, the guardian of it. I don't know. sounds very culty. <clears throat> yeah, very culty. <laughs> the um, um, and I uh, was not the kind of character that I am. Then, if I was a toxic kind of character, yep. um, then that would filter through into the community that that I'm the steward of. So you're leading by example. And everybody has to do that in any business. If we're talking about business, anybody who works in a business are inspired or uninspired by the business leader. And Correct. they their behavior, the way they are, the way they work, their dedication to the business, all of that stems from how the leader behaves. Uh, you, you can compare different businesses. You could look at the leader of that business and see how that person behaves, how they lead their life. And then without even having to walk into that office, you can make a fairly good judgment of what the atmosphere is going to be like within that organization, how people are going to behave, where they're going to be like, oh God, get, get out of here on five o'clock on the dot. Um, I'm not condoning like slave labor and like putting people. No, like, it's like people but, that run out the door. At but you mentioned and, Jacob and cut him and he bleeds orange. Longer. Yeah, yeah. If I had no desire or passion for UKBF how could I ever expect any of the team to either so you're a shepherd not a sheep you're, yeah yeah which is one of the analogies we use here that you've got yeah. to lead by example um I've really enjoyed this Richard I think hopefully Likewise. everybody listening has um really got a feel for you as a person what drives you what gets you out of bed in the morning and also learn more about UKBF and um, the Business Data Group. We can if tell people, by the likes and dislikes on the YouTube video. We'll, we'll find that out <laughs> shortly. If people want to find out more about UKBF, where can they where can they find you? UKBF.co.uk. Yeah, and do you use any of the shouty social media we platforms? We do use all the shouty, shouty. Or do you want to come straight to the website? <laughs> um, I mean, the website will lead them um, wherever, um, you know, like have links through, but UKBiz forums is consistent across all the social media platforms from tiktok yeah, cringe they'll see some funny stuff on there um youtube twitter facebook it's literally uk biz forums beautiful well brilliant thank you hopefully everyone's enjoyed listening slash watching our podcast and we'll hopefully we'll see you all soon with some new content